Let's dig right in with one of the questions that a lot of people are asking. We're hearing about it in the news, and a lot of people have no idea what it is. What are monoclonal antibodies, and how do these differ from the antibodies that people have when they've gotten either a COVID vaccine or have had the wild COVID virus? Yeah. So. As many people know, antibodies are what our white blood cells produce in order to fight infections. So in the case of when a person catches COVID or if they've had the vaccine, they start to make antibodies and particularly focused against the spike protein, which helps stop the virus from being able to enter into the cells. Now, monoclonal antibodies are synthetic. They are a pharmaceutical product where they are cloning the antibody that the human would normally make that fights against that exact same spike protein. So this is something that is given as an infusion to somebody when they're starting to get sick and also can be used prophylactically. So how is this different than a vaccine, which is also synthetically put into your body? So when you give somebody a vaccine, especially a a messenger RNA or even the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, this is then presenting to the person the spike protein. Once their immune system sees the spike protein, that's when their immune response starts making the antibodies against it, which are helping both to fight off the infection, but also for memory for when we see it again. So when a person takes the monoclonal antibodies, since this is not something that's being made by the body, it's not sticking around long term the way that the the naturally produced ones are. This is a medicine that's being given for the acute moment to try to minimize the severity of the disease. So the people that are getting these then, are these predominantly people that are currently um, testing positive or fighting an active symptomatic infection of coronavirus? Yes. In fact, a person has to have a positive antibody, a positive COVID test in order to qualify in the the most common sense of how this is being used. So there needs to be that first positive test and then it needs to be done as soon as possible. So the sooner that one starts, the sooner that it starts coding the virus, the less it will go into the cells and the less that the virus will be able to replicate. It's really supposed to be done within 10 days of getting sick. And who is recommending, who are these uh, monoclonal antibody treatments recommended for? Is it anybody that's get COVID or are there specific groups that are primarily being targeted with this medication right now? Certainly. So it is most focused on people who have more high risk risk conditions that may make COVID more likely to be a dangerous situation for them. But at this point, people who have mild to moderate disease, especially if there's a concern of them going into more severe disease, they're allowed to use it as well. And it's also starting to be introduced to people as a preventative. If they are a high risk person and they're living with somebody or they have a known significant exposure to COVID, it's also starting to be used in that way to stop them from trying to get sick in the first place. Now, how often are these treatments given if somebody tests positive? and they consult with their doctor or their provider and they determine that they're going to move forward with getting this treatment, is it the type of thing where it's administered at one time and it's a one and done, or is it the type of thing where they have to go back repeatedly? No, it's all done in one day. You know, And it's important to understand that this is a really good option amongst many options that we know. We have to remember that this is just one of the shields that are available to us, but at the same time, we also have the natural produced antibodies that people may have already, but also the importance of, you know, all the things we talk about, the importance of nutrition and, and having low anti-inflammatory types of foods and having good vitamin D and zinc levels. So this is just a tool, but obviously the hope is that one might not need to use it in the first place because their bodies already has protection and they have a really strong immune system already. One of the things that we've been seeing, especially with the Delta variant, is people um, having repeated cases of COVID, which I think was something that people originally thought may not be the case. So is this the type of thing that if you use a monoclonal antibody treatment when you have COVID, and let's say six months or a year from now, you get COVID again, can you use it again? It's from what you understand right now, is it the type of treatment that you can use again? Yes, it's, it's something that we use again, and there's also more than one product. So this is also something that the companies, if there is a significant variant change where it may make um, that particular uh, previous product not as successful, they can rapidly change it around and make a new monoclonal antibody for, some, for another version, and it can realistically be done 
that same technology can use for lots of other viruses for that matter. But in, per in terms of COVID, there is the potential that one could then be modifying the original product and then start producing the clones of that particular antibody to fight off the other types of infections that we may encounter in the future. One of the other questions that somebody asked is, how accessible is this financially? We're hearing a lot about sort of um, celebrities or high level politicians being, having access to this, but is it accessible to sort of the average person out there who may or may not even have insurance? Yes. So that is one of the exciting things is that it is something that is really becoming readily available. Many hospitals and fusion centers, it's easy to find locations from just doing a search for your local community. But also, it's something that is is being covered by the government. So it is actually a free treatment. Now, there are some private infusion companies that are charging it, but a person can absolutely access this treatment without cost right now. And can you explain again, how would somebody go about finding out whether or not this is available in the area where they live and how they would go about accessing it? Yeah, so it should be available in a lot of areas now. And by doing a Google search such as COVID monoclonal antibody and the name of your county or the name of your city, it should be pretty readily available. I mean, there's lots of websites that are being set up now to help people find it. So it's a rapidly growing and rapidly accessible product. Now, from your knowledge, is there any concern as far as um, using this form of treatment with somebody who's already been vaccinated? So it's actually felt that if a person's already vaccinated, but they do start to get sick, which of course at that point, that would indicate that their antibodies weren't sufficient to handle this in the first place. So this is kind of like a boost in that way. It's not a boost in having you make more antibodies, but it's a boost in the presence of those antibodies when you need it. Great. And then the final question that just came in, somebody is wondering is, do you have any knowledge as to whether or not this monoclonal antibody treatment will work for, vari for variants, right? As we sort of go through these renditions of different variants and mutations. So, so far it, they are. And again, that's one of the nice things about it is that the product can be modified as necessary to go after, to, to, to go after a variant if there's a variant where antibody levels aren't, or, or antibodies aren't working as well. Great. Well, we appreciate all of the information that you're giving us as always. I do want to encourage people both that if you've had any experience um, with yourself or other people with monoclonal antibody treatments, to please feel free to comment below um, because this is a series called Ask Dr. David. We're always looking for topics that you would like to hear us address. So if there are some topics you would like for us to talk about on this show, please note those in the comments as well. And the best way to find out about all of our offerings is to subscribe to this YouTube channel and follow us on social media. So we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks a lot, Dr. David. Bye-bye. Have a great day, everybody.